Tonight on Internet Tonight is the Wells Fargo website guilty of racial profiling. And we hook up with Sarah and her lovely website. And nerd rockers, they might be giants, grab a piece of the World Wide Web. Call your friends in Istanbul, not Constantinople, and tell them. It's Internet Tonight. Tonight, the show that would never put Dennis Miller in the booth. I'm Scott Harry. And I'm Michaela Pereira. Topping Internet News tonight, Wells Fargo Bank is facing allegations that they use their website to discriminate against minorities and encourage racial segregation. The suit alleges that the site's search engine, which was supposed to help home buyers look for prospective neighborhoods, actually does things like steer residents of minority zip codes into other minority zip codes. It also uses some of the worst racial stereotypes as descriptions. For example, residents of low-income black neighborhoods are described as those who, quote, tend to purchase fast food and take out food from chicken restaurants. As of this broadcast, Wells Fargo has removed the search engine from their website. An Oakland, California rock band called the Tabloids is encouraging musicians to post mislabeled songs on Napster in order to sabotage the music-sharing software. Through a website called StopNapster.com, the band is also asking people to post songs with anti-piracy messages inserted randomly into the music. Also, the tabloids swear they're not affiliated with major record labels. They're such a small band that prior to their announcement, none of their music was even traded on Napster. Oops, says the White House, as they now admit they may have violated their own federal privacy guidelines by tracking Internet users. The Office of National Drug Control Policy's new anti-drug campaign got a bit nasty after it was reported that they were tracking Internet users who connected to their anti-drug site, FreeVibe. Turns out that FreeVibe was working in conjunction with DoubleClick, a company which gathers personal information by dropping a cookie onto the hard drives of unsuspecting users. The White House, alarmed by privacy issues, says they, tend, they intend to put an end to such practices and destroy all previously collected data. You know, if you're like most people, you've yearned for the day when you could be the curator of your own banana museum. Well, opportunity has raised its ugly head. Owner Ken Bannister is selling his banana museum and website, bananaclub.com, at eBay. Through Saturday, you can bid on his 29-year-old collection of banana posters, statuettes, magazine clippings, and T-shirts. Ken says the domain name is one of the last remaining ones, which appeals to all kinds of people. Minimum bid is $900,000. So far, no bids taking, but they are taking steps to make the site more appealing. Burger King UK got in a spot of trouble with a giveaway promotion recently. With every kid's meal purchased, a CD-ROM was included. Well, that CD included Net Nanny filtering software intended for parents wanting to control their children's online access. But part of the installation process for the program includes revealing a list of thousands of links to pornography and other websites that contain adult material. The list was intended to allow parents the option of blocking only certain sites. Burger King was to halt the promotion, but by the time they did, one million CDs had already been given out in the U.K. You really can get it your way. Federal Judge Wednesday rejected a lawsuit against two Internet access providers, PSI Net Inc. and GTE, which was filed by dozens of Illinois State University athletes after their nude images were marketed on the old WWW. The ISU football players and other athletes were secretly videotaped in various states of undress by hidden cameras in restrooms, locker rooms, and showers. Judge Charles Kokoros says that he saw no evidence that either of the two companies provided or were responsible for any content on the websites in question. Websites, 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 and plenty more websites. Lucky for you, we've scoured through the great wide web that is known as the World Wide Web. And we have a few for you in tonight's Lunchbox. Time to get a new record. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't have enough advertisements in your life? Well, now you can view banner ads at your leisure and remark on there if any artistic, artistic difference. If banners are your friend at soulbath.com, you can stumble your way through the museum-esque site and marvel at what computer geeks can do with pixels. If the life of luxury is what you seek, you can now find it online. Louis Vuitton and the likes have joined the masses and started selling their wares on the web. The swanky goods are now available at Eli.
Luxury.com for the extravagant without the stuffy surroundings. And uh, Warner Brothers is relaunching their website today. Now in addition to new sections on movies, television, music, and games, you can also view content created specifically for the web. Warner Brothers Originals with Flash Animation stars the ruthless anti-superhero Lobo and those nasty fictions, the Gotham Girls. If you'd like to visit any of the sites that we mentioned on our show, come to internettonight.com where you'll find a list of links on something we call the Big List. The Big List! Oh, Lord. Nearly banner ad free. And I'm nearly deaf. If you're looking to brush up on your botany, stick around. After the break, we'll be showing you the Digital Library Project, an online database dedicated to flora of California. Plus, we may go meet up with John and John, a.k.a. they might be giants. All that in a chimp dreaming of his own banana museum. On Internet Tonight. Continue. Welcome back. If you originally uh, heard they might be giants on their breakout hit Don't Let Start began getting airplay on radio stations across the country, you might have come to the conclusion that this pop duo was destined to become a one-hit wonder. But John and John, as they are known, have several hits under their belt and have a knack for doing musically whatever they feel like. And so we sent Liam Maklem and his phony accent into the giant's lair to find out what he could. They might be giants. They're not your formulaic bubble jump top 40 bands. Oh no. John Lindell and John Flansburg started making their talking heads influence in telly pop together in the early 80s. And by 1987, they were out there carving out their singular niche in the post punk scene. But first of all, how do you define your music? We do very uh, uh, Beatles based kind of pop songs. But, the, but I think what probably makes them really different from regular pop songs is the lyrics are a little bit more unusual or personal to us and our sensibility. You, you chaps have been described as nerd rockers. How does that sit with you? Generally, we don't define ourselves to ourselves. I feel like that's allowed us to be sort of free about what we do decide we're going to do. Definitions aside, that you chaps are one of the first major bands to have a fanatical following on the internet. Yeah. How on earth did that come about? Well, I mean, as nerd rockers, um, uh, you know, we have a lot. We have a lot of fans in, you know, in the in the sort of, you know, in the scientific community. A lot of people like sort of you know, institutions and like you know, college students and also, you know, people who are who are doing stuff with computers pretty early on. Their own site, KMBG.com, holds albums, videos, and outright wackiness that reflects the levity of the band. Odd little ditties like this fill the site. Now, Broom, you must not sweep for me the dust that fills my room. Oh, John, I will not sweep for you, for I am not your broom. Additionally, their online offerings include dialasong.com. You can hear there's like 40 songs that aren't available really anywhere else online, especially for guys with an organ grinder kind of thing at a target. You click on the target and you hear a song. The sun is a mass of incandescent gas, a gigantic nuclear furnace. You 
caps have a lot of console fans who use the internet. They've actually built sites dedicated to use caps. What do you think yeah. about the fan sites? What do you make of those? Well, I mean, we, you know, there's a whole controversy right now about MP3. The way things work now that you're not helping your own record sale by shutting down pirated MP3s. You have to know that your tracks are available yeah. using, with the aid of the Napster software. So, how do you think of that? Uh, we discovered the feeling is wrong, and they're doing something about it. On their playful and imaginative website, you can link to a place to buy MP3s of their music. eMusic.com is pioneering this new approach to digital distribution. In the 1700s, we decided that intellectual property should be protected. The fact that this many people use Napster, that this, this many people really like downloadable music shows we're on the right path. We're able to provide people a legitimate Napster. Why is your model a good model for an artist to embrace? We're doing it in a way that compensates everybody. The artist is able to get 50% after cost of what we actually charge the customer. The fans themselves are able to get music much less expensive than they had in the past. You chaps have embraced the, the new way. Is it a way that's working? I think that it works to the extent that it's um, ultimately going to supplant the old way, but I don't think that the, um, that the rules are going to change. How many times do you say chaps in that? Seven. Currently, they might be dying for finishing up a children's album called No. In addition to songs, the CD will be enhanced with animations and programs that you can use on your computer. Do you ever uh, wish that you were one of those people who could uh, point out and name flowers when you're on a hike? Did you know that Sasquatch is an omnivore? Well, this next segment won't help you with Bigfoot, but if plants are your bag, an online database called CalFlora could turn you into an expert in no time. This is Matillaha Poppy. It's a great site when you're hiking in San Luis Obispo or Ventura counties because it just covers hillsides everywhere. Another common name of it is called uh, butter and eggplant or fried eggplant because of these great big white flowers with the yellow stain into them it resembles a fried egg. Tony Morasco's passion in life is plants, but unlike most botanists, he isn't spending much time outdoors these days. He works on Calflora, an online database containing information on more than 8,000 species of native California plant life. It is a website that has received considerable attention from scientists, students, and outdoor enthusiasts hailing from all over the globe. Other people from other parts of the world also are interested in California plants. Um, a lot of California plants have been taken into a horticultural trade. Things like uh, the mariposa lilies are very popular in Japan. Go ahead and browse through the database. Search by common name, color, region, or elevation. Chances are that without too much difficulty, you'll find a photo of that poppy you saw while you were hiking last weekend. Once you've found it, shoot off an email to Tony. He'll do what he can to answer your questions about it and any other flower or plant life. They want to know, where can I get a particular plant to grow in my garden? Where can I go in the wild to find a good wildflower show this year? Um, I found a particular plant. Is it rare and in danger? What can I do to help protect it? Ginger Ogle never expected that the Cal Flora database would become so popular. It's just one part of a larger effort she's heading up called the Digital Library Project. To date, the library contains more than 78,000 digital photographs and environmental documents. There are very few large image databases. The interesting thing about the project for me has been that, that um, the, the scientific community often doesn't have the resources, the technical resources, to put their information online. Ginger continues to iron out technical aspects of the site, making each flower and plant as easy to search for as possible. The page receives thousands of hits a day, and the questions keep coming. Well, every weekend we got email from somebody whose daughter's wedding is going to be next May, and she would like to know what flowers are in bloom next May. She would to please tell her. So, from prickly lettuce to the Pine Creek evening primrose, there's something for everyone at the Cal Flora site, whether or not you have a green thumb. I also enjoy bringing that appreciation to other people who, uh, through more understanding, are interested in protecting and preserving what is still available and exists in California. And the, uh, the Digital Library Project has grown quite a bit with photos of plants, animals, and geographical locations. It also has a search engine called Blob World. It lets you find pictures based on simple shapes and colors. 
It sounds confusing, and it is. You know, some people think that good old Elmer's is the only way to fix anything broken. Well, today's incredibly useful site will open your eyes to the world of adhesives. It's called thistothat.com. It's really quite simple, actually. Just select what material this and that are, and the site will provide you with the adhesive alternatives. There's information on toxicity as well as how much time it takes to adhere. So whether you're gluing together a ceramic plate or a glass vase, you'll know what product is best. The site also tells you where to get the glue that you need. Yeah, it's like a store. Mm. One nice thing about the web is that uh, we can all own a little piece of it. After the break, we hook up with some co-ed named Tara, and she gives us a tour of her little fun-filled homepage. And it's smackdown time, folks. Tonight, Scott and I get a little help from the Gadget Dawn. Oh, we'll be right back. Consider the uh, Humble homepage, a place where any schmo with a passing knowledge of HTML can reach millions. That's what our next segment, Home Sweet Homepage, is all about. So tonight, we'd like you to meet the ever-adorable Farah, tucked away in her little corner of the web. Hi, my name is Farah, and my website is called Black Palace, and I started it freshman year in college. We actually had to start websites for a class, and that's where I learned how to um, do HTML, and I got really interested in it and I decided to play around and my website started out as just like one page and eventually after time it grew and it is what it is today which is pretty huge and when people visit I, I have to say that you can't really see everything at once it's pretty big some of my favorite sections are the about me page the pictures page where you can actually see pictures of me and my family and friends I guess my, my other favorite part is the diary I have to say that it's, it's outrageous, but it's fun, and I hope that people will come to my website and just enjoy themselves and not think that I'm like some kind of freak or anything. Just enjoy the website. It was made for entertainment, and I hope that's what people get from it. And uh, if you'd like to tell the world about uh, what you've got brewing on your homepage, you can shoot us an email with the URL, and just maybe you too can be seen by our hundreds of viewers. You know, I don't know about you, but I really hate it when people watch me eat. All the more reason for me to avoid a place called the White Mana Diner in New Jersey City. If you're cruising through Jersey City, New Jersey on Highway 9, you may want to stop at the White Mana Diner. There, you will find the Diner Cam, a virtual nightmare for those who fear being viewed while eating. There's also a live camera that shows you exactly who's using the 25-cent hamburger coupon taken right from the website. A couple of years ago, the classic diner was almost bulldozed to the ground. Owner Mario Costa sold the diner to entrepreneurs that were going to turn it into a Dunkin' Donuts. Later, Mario reneged on the deal, and a court battle ensued. He finally settled and turned the diner into a historical landmark that would never be threatened again. Mario started there as a high school student. I started when I was going to high school and college, and I saved the money to go to law school, and that's how I bought it. 
There's also an iPix camera that gives you a dizzying view of the diner. The Manor is known as a late-night binge joint and meeting place for locals leaving drinking establishments. So if you're looking for a piece of Americana, check out the White Manor Diner Camp and pick out a Mario for me. The White Manor Diner is getting quite a bit of press of late. I mean, besides our prestigious little show here. While you're at the site, make sure you check out a recent story the local New Jersey TV station did on the camp. Yeah, it's of you there. It's round nine. It's all tied up at four wins apiece, and my fingers are already starting to sweat in anticipation of yet another exciting edition of the Internet Smackdown. Here are the rules. Mickey Lala and myself will be given a secret keyword. Then, using a popular search engine, we must each pick a word or phrase which incorporates said keyword. Whoever gets the most hits with their pick gets to give Sumi Das an hour-long massage. The loser has to spend three hours in a car with Jim Lauderback. Sound the Smackdown horn. How's that go? Lose lose situation for me. Yeah. Isn't it? Oh well, no. Then we've got a V-mail Smackdown submission from some guy called the Gadget Don. Roll it. Good Lord. The Gadget Don is here to provide you with three words for the Internet Smackdown. Parrot. Ready? Yeah. The first word is gadget. Yeah, uh, oh, I'm oh, yes, yes. Violence isn't allowed on our show. I'm sure you'll find something. Yikes. If I stall long enough, maybe we can get another word. Gadget banana is a good term. Gadget tree. Ooh, nice. Move. Hold on. Gadget tree. That would be, you need a D in there, babe. Gad. Yeah, there you go. Gadget tree. Spelling help, Mr. <laughs> Spell check. Oh, only by oh. 800. A very, very 8,340, and you got? 9,280. Very noble effort. And a yes, thank audience. you. Thank you. Thank you. Family out there today. Yeah, right, nice let's get the next word. Yes, yeah, done. Quick. The second word, if you're ready, is electric. Electric. Yeah. Comp electricity. Company. Electricity. So you can use the electric. word. Electric. Electric company? Mm, that's going to work. You know what? <laughs> Supportiveness. <laughs> I, you, know, you know what? I, I renege. And I'm not even going to tell you my word. Okay. Because. Yeah. I wish you all the luck. Oh, no. That's a oh, nice oh, one. Oh, 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 oh. 111. That is. Thousand. That is. Oh, you are horrible. Yeah, 224,000. Oh, well, I suck. Yeah. Yay! Thank you. Next week, we'll be shipping my family in from Canada to cheer for me in the studio. Hey, but please keep those uh, email word submissions coming and try not to wear any eye gear. Moving along, let's check out some online events now for Friday, June 23rd. Remember the band Europe? Why? Joey Tempest has been working on a solo career. Log on and implore him to stop. 5 p.m. Eastern at joeytempest.de. CBS's new reality show, Survivor, sure is a big hit. Chat with the host, Jeff Probst. Probe. We'll find out what's really going on on that island. That's APM Eastern at communities.com. And Henry Rollins is still a very angry man. You can watch him spew forth his displeasure from the safety of your own confines. 9 p.m. Eastern, rollingstone.com. And coming up on tomorrow's show, we meet up with the crazy creators of Chicken Run to chat about what they've been up to online. More from our own coop right after this.
been to InternetTonight.com recently. It's incredibly exciting, and of course, it's the home of the big list, a one-stop place for links to every website we've shown you in the show. It's also a pretty good place to find MP3s of the coolest new music. Today, today we are recommending Wasteland by Per Ubu. And if you act now, you can participate in our brand spanking new Simpsons quiz. Why a uh, Simpsons quiz, you may ask? Well, we just uh, did a story on them, and frankly, it's still one of, if not the best show on television. Time to foray into the old email stack again. This one comes from Ray. Is it true that Warm Nichols helped me win the jackpot on slot machines? Why is Scott so nice to Megan all of a sudden? Did she teach him a lesson backstage? Well, thanks for the letter, Ray. If you're uh, playing nickel slots, I don't think the term jackpot should really apply. And uh, no, Megan did not teach me a lesson backstage. It was the sound booth. Oh, be sure to email us to get a pithy response like that. Our address is it at ZDTV.com. Well, that's it for this uh, robust edition of Internet Tonight. I'm Scott Harris. And I'm Kayla Ferreira. Thanks for joining us. Sound booth? Um. Daily dose of the best from the web. They might only be two geeky guys who are writing witty little pop ditties, but they might be giants. You'll meet them on tonight's show. Oh, plus uh, an incredibly useful website, uh, a launch box, a homepage from another overly excited viewer, the Internet Smackdown Round 9, and with a little help from a guy named Gadget Don. Oh, he's great. Internet Tonight, coming up tonight at 10, 9 central, only on Reading TV.